Good day, students. This is again your instructor for the subject SCSC 16 or Life and Works of Rizal, Kenneth Alvin Cinco. First of all, I would like to greet again everybody. Uh, nice day. Uh, I hope you are having a great time. I hope you are having uh, a good uh, well-being even if we are still struggling this time of the pandemic. I wish everybody good health. For this uh, session, we will again discuss uh, Jose Rizal, but uh, not uh, the outside forces that shaped Jose Rizal, as what we did in lesson, or rather, module 1. Uh, in the start of our module, it's uh, module 2. For lesson 2.1, we will start with his life. And by starting with his life, we will start with his family origin. That's why we will be discussing uh, the childhood of Rizal, especially a lot of aspects which influence him into being the person who he is. So I would like everybody to give me your undivided attention for this session so that we can have a fruitful and productive discussion in the life and works of Jose Rizal. Again, I would like to remind everybody that this recording is for your benefit. Anytime you can uh, log in to your account and access through the Google Drive or uh, YouTube and you can uh, have this video lecture, you, uh, you can have this video lecture recording, uh, review it and then make it as your reference. You can also download this video uh, so that you can bring it anywhere uh, you want to watch. Okay, so, so much for that. Uh, let us delve into the life of Rizal, starting from his childhood. For this lesson, we will be tackling the development of Jose as a child and we his family background, also his childhood education. And we will try to see what were the foremost influences in his uh, patriotism, especially in the early years of his life. So our learning outcomes would be to evaluate the role of Rizal's family in his development. And also we will try to examine uh, Rizal's childhood and the significant events that influenced his nationalism. So, first of all, I would like to ask everybody, how did uh, Rizal's family influence the child Rizal into the man that he became? What do you think? When you were a child, who were your uh, foremost influences? Who do you think are the people who have given you ideas or have shared their personalities to you and made you who you are right now. I would like you to ponder about that so that you can relate uh, this lesson to yourself. But more so, who among those uh, family members of yours have really, uh, you know, stuck with you throughout your life? No? And a result as a man, he has in experience also all of those things no he has uh, somebody who may idolized he al also had uh, people who he relied upon no? and he had people who very much influenced him into becoming who he is right now so as young as he is Rizal wrote literary pieces no when he was a child he was already proficient in latin and Spanish. No? So what thoughts did Rizal have during his childhood that later manifest significantly in his adult life? So I want you to hold on to these questions no? as we move on to our discussion on Rizal's childhood. Okay, so we start with Jose Rizal and his family. Uh, in starting with Jose Rizal and his family, it's very much important for us to know who uh, his parents were but most importantly it's also important to trace back 
uh, the family origins and what were the status of Jose Rizal's family so that we can understand uh, why did he came to be, what were the opportunities that were given to him as much as uh, uh, the chances in life that uh, led him to become who he was. So, uh, I present to you this uh, family tree of Jose Rizal. It's a little bit... Um, a little bit uh, tiny no? uh, you can't see a lot on this uh, family tree but don't worry this PowerPoint presentation is already uh, provided to you in the VHEE or uh, on other venues no? if I may so let's see uh, who's uh, the ancestors of Jose Rizal no? so uh, as you can see here uh, we have uh, in in the in the lower part we have here uh, Chinko no? and uh, Shanko no uh, Kunya okay so we can see already that uh, on the father's side because this is Huserisal this is Huserisal let's say this is uh, Huserisal no the hero so he had his mother uh, Chudora Alonso Rialonda and Francisco Mercado Rizal and also their uh, family trees no? so this is divided here uh, this is divided on this side is the father side and on this side uh, mother side of Jose Rizal so what do we see actually if we trace uh, it, we trace Jose Rizal's ancestry up to its root over here is already uh, he had half of him is pure-blooded Chinese from the uh, Liamco, Lamcos, uh, Chinko and the Cunyas. No? So uh, and from here in her his mother's side uh, there's also uh, names who were prominent uh, during uh, the time of his childhood. So uh, let's take a closer look so, Jose Rizal is the son of Chidora Alonso Rialonda and Francisco Mercado Rizal. As you can see, uh, the parents of Francisco Mercado, the father of Rizal, are Juan Mercado and uh, Alejandra. No? And the ancestor of Juan Mercado is Francisco Mercado the first actually this is the first Francisco Mercado and also uh, Bernarda uh, Monica and as we can see we have here Domingo Mercado and Inez de la Rosa so this in uh, Domingo Mercado is actually Domingo Lamco no? in the 1600s he moved uh, into uh, here in the Philippines in the 1600s but actually from China and in the 1700s, when uh, the policies on changing the surnames were uh, executed in the Philippines by the Spanish government, he changed, Domingo Lamco changed his surname from being Lamco into Mercado, which means market. No? As you can see, it's very much Chinese. They believe in luck, into, uh, embedded in luck should be embedded into their names that's why uh, we can theorize that uh, Domingo Lamco changed uh, the surname into Mercado which is which means in Spanish market so that's basically the uh, the ancestry of Jose Rizal in terms of his father's side so in his mother's side Judora Alonso he was uh, Chidora Alonso was the daughter of Lorenzo Alonso and Brigida Quintos and Cipriano Alonso and Maria Florentina were the uh, ancestors or parents of Lorenzo Alonso. Actually, um, the Quintos no, uh, were very prominent. Actually, uh, Quintos were Spanish officials and the uh, Alonsos were uh, also had a prominent standing in society if I'm not mistaken or uh, they are their roles are reversed also but uh, the most important thing here is that they came from 
a, a well-meaning family. They had uh, this uh, power in their name, no? in, in that society, in their time. And the Mercados, in uh, Francis, Francisco Mercado's side, in Jose Rizal's uh, father's side, they were uh, Chinese men. They had businesses, but as we have discussed in lesson in the previous lessons in uh, module one, uh, their business being Chinese transformed when the Philippine uh, economy also transformed. No? When the Philippine economy also transformed from being a galleon trade into cash crop uh, society, their role also uh, changed from being uh, merchants and into uh, having business in land owning or land management. Okay? So that's how uh, the Rizal family's ancestry were. No? So Don Francisco Mercado II married Doña Tudora Alonso Irilianda. No? Uh, Doña Tudora came from a respected family, an educated family. And jo Doña Tudora would later be described by Rizal in his letter to Bl Blumentritt as a woman of more than ordinary culture and also a mathematician who has read many books. Now, it was common for uh, women from that time to read books, no? but the books were read were mainly uh, from the Doctrina Christiana, uh, holy books, holy scriptures, because what, as you can uh, imagine, the people long ago in these islands they were really uh, uh, educated in the Christian way, in the Catholic way. So the, the, the girls were uh, expected to be you know prim and proper and, and to have uh, a certain level of high understanding for the uh, biblical scriptures and the homilies you know, and those sacred things and also in the uh, domestic activities of being a woman but uh, it is important to note that uh, Doña Tudora was a very educated uh, person you know she was as described by Rizal a mathematician but she was also a woman of extraordinary culture that's perhaps because she came from a family uh, with a prominent background with a very uh, good background standing in society so the mercado family thrived and rose to the class of citizens known as the principalia or the middle class so in the time of rizal the principalia was now the middle class no it, they are not really the the people who work no uh, on very low uh class jobs but uh, they have this certain standing no principalia was the, w was the name for that class for uh, in our uh, in our present time we can identify them as the middle class those who have these jobs not so special jobs but not so lowly jobs also they were also land managers and uh, most of them became land owners also so principalia welcomed high class visitors being a principalia means that you can have visitors which were priests which were officials down to the guardia civil so in 1849 when governor uh, general narciso claveria decreed that people should adopt new surnames for policies on taxation so don kiko francisco the second adopted the name rizal so there there was a decree in 1849 to have a a new um listing of surnames for the purposes of taxation so don kiko now that's the time that they used the name or don kiko used the name rizal that came from the spanish rizal which means greenfield so what can we imply from this we can imply that uh mr uh mercado or don kiko was now shifting no the family name from being Mercado into Rizal, but still you can see there, no? Greenfield, the influence of the changing uh, econ economic um, setup of their time. So from being a merchant 
a mercado surname into being the Rizal, the Rishal, the Greenfield, the into the land management surname. So, Rizal means Greenfield. So, Jose described his father as a model of fathers, a hardworking giver who supported his children's education. So, that's how Rizal also uh, described his father. Now, um, we will look into uh, the family, the immediate family of uh, Jose Rizal, no? the, sons and, the sons and daughters of Tudora and Don Kiko or Francisco Mercado. So, this is a picture of uh, them. Uh, all in all, we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, no? Uh, some sources say uh, it's 12, but it's actually uh, this. So, this, the daughters of uh, Teodora Alonso and uh, Francisco Mercado Rizal um, are Saturnina, Narcisa, Lucia, Olympia, Maria, Concepcion, Soledad, Trinidad, and Josefa. So, the, these are the daughters of uh, Don Kiko and Doña uh, Teodora. Okay? So, these are the siblings of Jose Rizal and he had a single mm, he had a, a, a single brother. He had a brother who is Pasiano. Okay? Jose was born on June 19, 1861. So, Jose Rizal's father and mother became considerable influences on his childhood. Both of them were religious and uh, both were merciful, no? but uh, they were very influential in Jose's education. Although her sisters all loved Jose, his brother Pasiano played the most significant role in the development of his patriotism. Uh, Jose Rizal's sister, sisters were very much caring no? because Pepe was their you know, bunso. Uh, they were caring, they, they showed a lot of affection to Jose, no? but in terms of the patriotism that Jose Rizal developed, it was Pasiano that influenced him. He was the one who even influenced him to convince him to study abroad, no? to continue his studies and not to just uh, stay here in the Philippines. So, we look into Pepe's childhood education. Let's let's look into uh, Jose Rizal's childhood education. So Jose was fondly called uh, by his family as Pepe. Uh, he was homeschooled like any other middle class uh, child uh, in the, of his time, uh, with his mother as his first teacher. So because we know Doña Chidora was well educated, uh, she became the first teacher of Jose Rizal. His family was deeply religious and would always pray together during the Angelus. Her yaya would also often tell him folk tales and legends, which would later influence his interest in myths and folklore. So, what do we see here? Because in the works of Rizal, there are also motifs, there are also themes which tackle or which use uh, mythology, Philippine folklore, especially Mariang Makiling. No? Uh, in his later works, we can see that uh, Jose Rizal was experimenting no, on these characters of, uh, from Filipino folklore. And it was rare uh, on that uh, time, uh, during Jose Rizal's time, because uh, the writers of those uh, of those time, the Filipino illustrados, were, were not uh, really keen. They were using the, sp the Spanish or the European um, influences in their writing. But Jose Rizal experimented with Filipino folklore. So, we can say that their yaya also played a significant role in his uh, techniques of writing and in his development as a person. No? It's like the childhood no, uh, of every uh, boy. No? Stories of folklore, of uh, mythology, all of those. So, Rizal experienced those stories from his yaya. So, her mother was also a storyteller whose stories served to teach Jose about morality. So, in, in an 
in a household where uh, we have this kind of people who were educated from the uh, Spanish and also from um, religion, we have morality as the first education to the uh, young child, very young child. She, Doña Tudora uh, was also the one who taught Jose how to pray, of course, Jose's intelligence manifested when he learned the alphabet at the age of three. Imagine that because, well, we have no distractions long time ago, but, well, it proved no, that Jose Rizal was very uh, intelligent. He showed interest in books. Like most of the Principalia class, Jose afforded to study under private tutors. So, this is uh, the part where I'm saying that Jose Rizal had his opportunities. Because he came from a well-meaning family, he had this status, they can afford to hire tutors uh, for them. No, for Jose to be educated, for the children of the Mercados to be educated, especially the boys. No, so some of the teachers of Jose Rizal were Maestro Celestino and Maestro Lucas Padua. His third tutor, Maestro Leon Monroy, was the one who honed Jose's basic uh, Latin reading and writing skills. And then eventually, Jose showed his poetic gifts and would often be asked by his mother to write verses. So at the age of nine, Jose studied under Maestro Justiniano Cruz, who was also Pasiano's former mentor in Binian. The life of Jose under Maestro Cruz was strict no, and rigid. It was not like our time. No, uh, in, in the uh, time of the Spanish, the tutors were allowed to have uh, punishment what with me meant capital or not not capital like a uh, uh, punishment no a uh, strict physical punishment when you were not disciplined enough so that's how they were rigid and they took it also from the friars no so he took also painting lessons from maestro juancho maestro cruz father-in-law jose then excelled in latin and spanish under maestro cruz's Tutelage. So it was really Maestro Cruz who were uh, tutoring him into honing no, his Spanish language. Now, on December 17, 1870, Re Rizal returned to Calamba after a year and a half of studying at Binyan Laguna. So let's go to uh, the influences of Jose Rizal when uh, he was just young and he was just beginning no, to light uh, the fires of his patriotism. Huh? Let us look into that. So there were two significant events when he was a young child that influenced Jose Rizal when he was still growing. No? It influenced his uh, memory into being a patriot later in his life. These two memories were number one was the uh, arrest of Doña Tudora no, this, this illegal and unjust arrest of John Tudora when, uh, by the Spanish authorities and priests and the false accusation. And the second one is the uh, execution of the martyrs Jose uh, Gomez Borgos and Zamora. So what happened uh, to Rizal's mother, Doña Tudora? No? The first one uh, when Doña Tudora was arrested, no, uh, she was already advancing in her age. No? The story was that uh, Doña, uh, Doña Tudora had a brother, this was Jose Alberto. Uh, this brother was asking for help to Doña Tudora. No? So, big, why? What, what was the, um, the issue? The issue was Jose Alberto's wife. Now, the brother wanted to divorce his wife, but then Doña Tudora advised the opposite. Because, you know, uh, during those times, it was Catholic, and it was uh, the respect uh, for, for the Catholic doctrine and the like. No? Instead, uh, Doña Tudora said that he would house the wife of Jose Alberto into their home. No? 
Now, when the wife was at Don Doña Teodora's, she accused Doña and Jose Alberto of poisoning her. So, kasi uh, itong si Jose Alberto ay aalis, no? So, sinabi ni Doña Teodora na doon lang muna sa bahay. Pagkatapos, anong ginawa? So, ito si uh, asawa naman ni, ni Jose Alberto ay pinagbintangan niya yung matanda at saka si Jose Alberto sinabi niya na sa mga otoridad na ah, linalason siya ito namang si Doña Tora nagmamaka ah, nagmamagandang loob lamang hinahatiran siya ng pagkain ganun pero yung totoo talaga ah, itong asawa ni Jose Alberto na kapatid ni Doña Tora ay naghehysterical no at uh, pinagbibintangan na si Doña Teodora. So, after this, the Guardia Civil and Mayor uh, Antonio Vivencio del Rosario arrested uh, the old lady. No? These authorities also forced Doña Teodora to accept, to concede to the crime without, you know, without the proof. However, the case was already in the Supreme Court no? and Doña Teodora was acquitted. So, this decision proved that he she was unjustly detained she was unjustly imprisoned no now uh, the mayor who was not only the family friend of uh, the accused but also the servant of the priors begged for forgiveness so donya tudora was unjustly imprisoned for two and a half years so you can just no, imagine the frustration and the rage of young Jose no when he witnessed Doña Teodora being taken away no napaka uh, liit na bata na bata pa si Rizal at na saksihan din na yung pambibintang no ng mga fraile no at uh, ng iba pang mga otoridad kay sa kanilang pamilya so isa yon sa nag uh, na, nakapasubo kay Jose Rizal na ganun yung kanyang isipin no sa uh, mga Espanyol pagkatapos nun ang nangyari ay isang episode din sa buhay ni Jose Rizal ay yung pag-execute sa tatlong pareng si Jose uh, Burgos, Mariano Gomez, at Asinto Zamora. So, this is the famous Gumborza. No? So, what is this execution? On February 17, 1872, these priests were executed by Garote in Bagumbayan. So, Bagumbayan, our, our present-day Luneta, uh, you know, it it plays a significant role in the life of Jose Rizal, no? Because first and foremost, he witnessed the first, the martyrdom of secular priests or Filipino priests, no? And it sparked his rage. And it sparked, at a very young age, it sparked in him, you know, an understanding that there were injustices in the society during his time. So, Rizal's brother Pasiano was very close to the Burgoses. So this was the uh, situation. Rizal's brother Pasiano was very close to uh, Burgos and was deeply resentful no, of the execution. No? Because uh, the execution of these three priests resulted from their implication of a previous event called the Cavite Mutiny. There was this Cavite Mutiny. What is a mutiny? A mutiny is like an uprising, no? isang pag-aaklas. Sa Cavite noon, merong tinawag na Cavite Mutiny. Itong Cavite Mutiny ay pag-aaklas ng mga magsasaka at mga iba-iba pang mga indyo ng mga Pilipino. Now, ito sila Jose Gomez, uh, uh, sila Mariano Gomez, si Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora, they were uh, implicated, no? Na ito sila kasi mga paring katoliko, eh, noong panahon yun, hindi pa common at merong diskriminasyon sa mga paring katoliko, no? Uh, in fact, the Spanish authorities took the chance to implicate these three secular priests, no? Who clamored for reform and voiced out against the discrimination of the Filipino clergy. Noong panahon kasing yun, yung uh, mga simbahan 
yung namamahala ay yung mga Espanyol pa. Pero, unti-unti, nagkakaroon ng mga Pilipinong mga pare. No? Itong mga Pilipinong mga pare, tinatawag na uh, mga secular priest, hindi mga Espanyol. No? So, merong diskriminasyon sa ginagawa ng mga uh, pareng Espanyol sa mga Pilipinong pare. So, yun yung uh, pinaglalaban ng tatlong ito. Ngayon, nung nagkaroon ng Cavite Mutiny, nagkaroon ng chance yung mga Spanish authorities na i-implicate o ikonekta itong sila uh, gumbursa doon sa Cavite Mutiny, yung pag-aaklas na armadong pag-aaklas. So, ibig sabihin, nakagawa ng krimen ngayon yung uh, tatlong paring ito sa sabi ng mga nag sa kanila. So, the above priests who were later called the Gomborsa were at the forefront of this secularization movement. Itong secularization movement, ito yung pagsusulong na sana na, ng, ng mga paring Pilipino na dapat yung mga simbahan o yung mga parokya ng mga uh, na nandito sa Pilipinas ay pinamamahalaan na ng mga Pilipinong pare, hindi na ng mga uh, Espanyol na pare. So, yun yung movement na yan. So, ayaw ng mga prile nun. So, inimplicate nila itong si Gomez, si Burgos at si Zamora. So, these three were condemned to death because of this. So, since Pasiano, yung, uh, yung kapatid ni Rizal was the most influential sibling to Jose, uh, the, the three priest's demise affected Pasiano deeply and in turn Pas uh, Pasiano as he was you know, uh, letting uh, Jose understand all that's happening because he was a child Jose Rizal would later you know, inculcate in him a hatred no? uh, perspective of the injustices of the uh, Spanish authorities especially of the clergy So, Jose Rizal would dedicate El Filibusterismo to the martyrdom of these three priests. So, kung makikita nyo sa El Filibusterismo, idinedicate ni Jose Rizal yung El Filibusterismo sa ngalan ng tatlong paring ito, ni Gomez, ni Burgos, at ni Zamora. That's why they are very influential in Philippine history. Don't forget them. No? Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora played a significant role in honing the the consciousness of Jose Rizal in his early age. So, itong dalawang ito, yung uh, uh, yung dalawang pangyayaring ito ay na na translate sa mga works ni Jose Rizal. So, titingnan muna natin kung ano ba yung mga works na naka sa kanya at ano yung mga works na ginawa niya. So, meron tayong dalawang uh, works na i-examine ngayon. Uh, so, in this section, we will discuss Doña Tudora and uh, the Gumbursa in Rizal's thoughts and writing. So, uh, paano ba naka siya o paano niya nagawa no? uh, yung mga uh, works na ito? Well, the first one is not really ginawa ni Jose Rizal, pero ito yung uh, sinasabing mga klase ng lesson na uh, itinuturo ni Doña Tudora sa batang si Jose Rizal. No? So, ito yung isa sa mga pinaka uh, famous na mga kwento na alam kong ikwento pa rin sa mga bata ngayon. So, ito yung pinaka famous uh, na connection sa buhay ni Rizal, kwentong bayan na may connection sa buhay ni Rizal na ikunento sa kanya ng kanyang inang si Teodora Alonso. Ito yung ang kwento ng gabuga mo. Babasahin ko. So, in English, there was once two moths, a mother and a child, and a single lamp burning with its light so wild. The mother moth said with so much worry, my child do not go to the light so fiery. But the light did glimmer, ever did so bright, its rays consuming the young moth's sight. So the young moth went 
to that flame burning, and fire did consume the child's life and wings. The mother was stunned, her tears were flowing, I told my dearest, but now there's nothing, only the ashes of burnt body and wings. Light so bright you are good, but you leave sons dying, you leave sons dying. Okay, so yun yung kwento ng gamo-gamo. Basically, merong, yung, merong gamo-gamo, yung ina at saka yung anak. Yung anak, sinabihan ng ina o yung mas older moth na, na wag kang lumapit doon sa nagniningning na apoy o oh, yung yung apoy ng lampara no ng kandila so kahit sinabihan ng ina na wag pumunta doon pumunta pa rin yung bata doon no yung batang apo yung batang gamo-gamo doon at dahil sa paglapit niya ng masyado nasunog yung apoy and then, hindi nasunog yun nasunog yung pakpak ng uh, munting gamo-gamo at yun yung nangyari sa kanya so basically ito yung isa sa mga moral stories na ipina itinuro ni Doña Teodora kay Jose Rizal ano kaya yung nakikita nyo dito ano kaya yung meaning ng moss ng light yan yung gusto kong mga tanong Uh, na itanong sa inyo no ano kaya yung meaning ng moss ng light ano yung meaning ng uh, flame dito at saka ano yung sinasabing you live since dying ano kaya yung uh, pinapahiwatig nito sa buhay ni Jose Rizal okay yan yung mga tanong na i will leave to you and to your interpretation muna while uh, we will uh, clarify some things. No? Yung pangalawa naman ay ito ay isang uh, sulat, letter uh, of Jose Rizal to Mariano Ponce. Now, Rizal wrote about the impact of the execution of the three Filipino priests. So, makikita natin sa sulat na ito yung talagang impact kay Jose Rizal. Hindi lang yung ating haka-haka, hindi lang yung ating discussion, kundi makikita natin mismo sa mga sinulat ni Jose Rizal na malaki ang impact ng pagkamatay ng tatlong paring Gomez Burgos at Zamora. So, ito'y isang sulat uh, na ibinigay niya kay Mariano Ponce. Sabi niya doon sa sulat, so in English na, of course, kasi hindi naman natin, hindi ako nakakabasa ng Spanyol, no? but this is a translation which I lifted from uh, a textbook The Life and Works of Jose Rizal by Juan Ubayas et al. So, sabi niya kay Mariano Ponce, Without 1872, there would not be now either a Plaridel, a Haina, a Sanxiangco, or would there exist brave and generous Filipino colonies in Europe. Without 1872, Rizal would be a Jesuit now, and instead of writing No Limitangire, would have written the opposite. Ano ba yung isang Jesuit? Ang Jesuit ay isang paring o priling uh, katoliko o espanyol no so sabi ni Rizal dito na kung wala yung 1872 na martyrdom ng tatlong pare wala sana si Jose Rizal ngayon his wita sana siya nandun sana siya sa kumbento yung ginagawa niya isa siyang uh, yung saradong katolikong naniniwala uh, sa kanyang ginagawa no At the sight of those injustices and cruelties, while still a child, my imagination was awakened. And I swore to devote myself to avenge one day so many victims. And with this idea in my mind, I have been studying and this can be read in all my works and writings. So, kita mo, sabi nga niya, uh, all my works and writings, yung impact ng nangyari noong 1872 ano nga ulit ang nangyari noong 1872 yung gumbur sa martyrdom no? so God will someday give me an opportunity to carry out my promise good may they commit abuses let 
there be imprisonments, banishments, executions. Good. Let destiny be fulfilled. The day they lay their hand on us, the day they martyrize innocent families for our faults, goodbye, friar government, and perhaps goodbye, Spanish government. So that, that was the pronouncement of Jose Rizal uh, in relation to the issue no, of the martyrdom of the Gumbursa. So yan mula talaga sa mga sinulat niya, isang letter niya kay Mariano Ponce. No? Makikita mo na from a young age na impluensyahan na siya ng mga nangyayari sa kanyang paligid. Okay? So, makikita natin na from a young age, meron siyang magandang edukasyon at saka meron ding mga situations na nag-lead sa kanya upang magkaroon ng sariling mga haka sarili niyang mga uh, beliefs no na naging daan upang maging uh, si Jose Rizal siya in the later part of his life so in summary what we discussed in this lesson we traced the origins of Rizal's family we looked into his uh, family tree we also familiarized with the members of the Rizal family especially of his sisters and uh, his brother the most influential sibling he had he, we also enumerated the influences on uh, Rizal's childhood education who were her who were his teachers uh, what were the kinds of lessons that he took up we did that and also we evaluated the influences of Rizal's patriotism during his childhood we looked into two significant events in his childhood life and that's uh, and how it honed him into becoming who he is in his uh, you know adult years so my reference and sources is uh, this the life and works of Jose Rizal and also our module and I would like to thank everybody for listening to this uh, lecture for lesson 2.0 uh, one. I hope to see you again next time for our next lesson. Goodbye and God bless.